of the Congo. Starting a 48-hour New York City salute to Daryl F. Zanuck's The Longest Day, a Reader's Digest co-sponsored fundraising banquet attracts a distinguished list of guests, including the most impressive gathering of D-Day heroes ever foregathered under one roof. The International Rescue Committee, the object of the benefit, has its president, William J. Vanden Heuvel, in attendance to introduce Mr. Zanuck to the assembly. signal for a series of tributes to Mr. Zanuck, initiated by Cornelius Ryan, author of The Longest Day. Cardinal Spellman and socialite Mrs. Ronald Tree then hear General Omar Bradley add to the great knight's panegyrics before introducing the men he led on The Longest Day, inspiring a standing ovation for the heroes the momentous picture immortalizes. The tribute to Mr. Zanuck carries over to Broadway before the preview of the stirring film, under the auspices of the Rescue Committee. And though the Great White Way is seldom without its sensations, the sight of Paul Anka, composer of the Longest Day's theme song, leading a playing of the national anthem, brought it a moment of drama unmatched in its history. Arthur and Mrs. Ryan are in the van for the preview, to which elder statesman Bernard Baruch lends his gentle dignity. And from the Normandy beachheads, here's General McAuliffe and his airborne boys. General and Mrs. Gavin and the Spiro Scurruses are here to hail the longest day and Mr. Zanuck and two D-Day and Korea leader, General Ridgway, with his wife. The public turnout stops Broadway traffic as Mr. Zanuck arrives with Senator and Mrs. Jaffetz, Cardinal Spellman, the Vanden Heuvels, and Chairman of the Benefit Preview, General Bradley, here with his wife. The great national networks make the longest day preview a treat for their viewers. And Mr. Zanuck is interviewed for the airways by the popular Harry Reasoner. As the Broadway tribute to Mr. Zanuck and the longest day runs into a second day, rain fails to dampen the spirits of the New Yorkers wishing to pay homage to the epical motion picture on the occasion of its world premiere. A fundraising first night for the Salk Institute that attracts the youthful Fabian among a host of celebrities from every walk of life as the public besieges Sal Mineo for his autograph. With Tommy Sands and his wife, the former Nancy Sinatra, a sinusure of eyes, followed by Sheila Graham, the popular newspaper columnist. Richard Beamer and his date fill out a remarkable attendance of amusement world personalities that includes Henry Fonda, who plays General Teddy Roosevelt II in the remarkable Zanuck D-Day recreation. First Lady of the stage, Helen Hayes, attends with Dr. Salk, polio vaccine discoverer, and the renowned Basil O'Connor. Composer and star Paul Anka and Mr. and Mrs. Scorus are on hand, as talented Tammy Grimes arrives with Roddy McDowell. Nationally read Earl Wilson adding to the press list, as a group from the cast of The Longest Day is joined by Red Buttons, another of the 42 international stars of the fascinating film. Naturally, it's another great night for Mr. Zanuck, who finds Tony Marvin anxious to bring the story of The Longest Day to his nationwide audience. Meanwhile, Broadway continues its unprecedented salute to The Longest Day, as New York's Old Guard Band leads marching units from scores of social and service clubs from all over the city, vying with each other to pay tribute to The Longest Day. A kaleidoscope of tramping feet that monopolizes the Great White Way for the full mile from Times Square to Columbus Circle. A demonstration as unconfined as the street's New Year's Eve celebration. of enthusiasm that started in Paris rolls with ever-growing momentum over New York to honor Mr. Zanuck's incredible achievements in the longest day. And like the Eiffel Tower, the lights of the Great White Way emblazon the night to hail the immortalizing of the historic events of June 6, 1944. A world premiere that makes motion picture history that will live long in the memory of all who partake in this greatest of first nights.